okay, don't mind any of this. We're inside just now, but we're going to go out and play with the diesel heater powered tumble dryer. I've kind of started on it, started taking it apart, uh, but I haven't made it diesel heater powered yet. So let's go outside and start doing that. Okay, this wouldn't be my first choice uh, for a tumble dryer, but it was free and it was in the scrap pile. So that's what we've got. It's a condenser type, the one that's got a heat exchanger and a water tank that catches all the condensed liquid. We'd be better, well, everyone would be better if you just had one. You could vent the hot, wet air outside and not have to go through the extra step of having water tanks to clean and uh, the insides of filtery things to clean. Uh, I'm going to have to get the compressor out. But where I am so far, let me take you round the back. Ha! <laughs> That's what she said. Round the back of almost every tumble dryer, it's fairly universal, as this shaped metal part here would be in this space. This bit spins, blowing air up through here. There's a heater element, which is this bit. I have uh, already chopped the wires off the heated element part. I might just take this whole thing out. Down there is the humidistat and a, a temperature sensor basically for this setup because it's a sensor based uh, tumble dryer. But anyway, so air comes out of there, gets hit up through this heater element and then is blown into the drum. That's the spinning drum inside. A hot now. Damp air goes down through there, which is in there. You go down in there, through there, and then it gets condensed in here, and your water gets put in there, and blah blah. And your rest of your now dr dry ish air comes out the front there. So, what we want to do is remove this heater element. Basically, we can just take it entirely out of the system, put that cover back on, so we'll now have the air blowing through the drum. It'll be cold air until we heat it up. Now the intake for that setup is these louvers here. So I suggest uh, drilling a hole about there, about that size, block those ones off, maybe block the ones off at the back, and then just plumb the external diesel heater's output pipe right in there. And then we can turn it on, fire up the diesel heater, and then have hot air uh, sucked in, blown through. I think, I think we'll go do that for stage one. Okay, let's see it in operation. So the back panel's back on, that's just blown the air through the drum. The diesel heater, the each calorie all in one external is blowing hot air out through that hole. Oh, it's running with the door open, how dangerous! The hot air then goes into the back where the intake for the drum is, and then it blows out nice hot air out of the drum. And then out the drum, through there, and then out down here somewhere. So at the moment, uh, this is being a normally vented tumble dryer, as oh, I'll explain once I've stopped it uh, why we should just use a normal vented one. Right, let's get the thermal imager. So we've got our nice hot diesel heat over here, open hot air. And then we come inside the drum, we've got a nice hot back thing on the drum where the hot air is coming out. You see the drum's hot in there. Can't really see it. Too hot from this because it's shiny aluminium. Aluminium. Can I even shut the door once it's? Oh! I have to unbreak the. Wait. There must be a way to do this. Rot row. I've broken the door thing. Ha ha ha! Okay. Sure. Uh, right. Okay. Well, anyway, so hot drum, and then we would probably have. Hot air coming out here if the door could. Oh, it is. It's getting hot in there. That's good, right. So now we've done that, we've got it actually running in hot air. I should go and get something 
to put inside and right, let's just see if the temperature down here creeps up. Can I feel hot air coming out? Mm, not particularly. Then again, the door's also not shut. Right, okay, let's get a towel or something in. Throw it in and see if it dries. Right, we have a couple of dripping wet, sopping wet uh, kitchen towels. Put that in there. Put that in there. Now the door will shut. Right, let's just fucking set it for an hour. Well, it's been about an hour. Um, hasn't uh, burst into flames, which is always nice. Still got, it's got hot air coming out here now, so that means, does that mean the towels are nearly dry? Oh, I'm nearly on the real ground. I mean, I've even got a thing here. A kneeling on pad. Where's my thermal imager? Let's just have a video. <gasps> Go. So we've got plenty of hot air coming out of the now tumbly dryer bit. This bit's nice and warm because it's full of hot air as well. I don't know why I turned my phone on the side there. I've had to make some uh, adjustments here with cardboard. <laughs> and there's it's definitely hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, we might be too hot. <laughs> the anchor diesel here might be putting out too much heat. Oh shit. Oh shit, boys. Well, that's good. That means you could run your diesel here at a lower uh, power output. We'll turn the diesel heater off and then we'll just let the tumble dryer run for a little bit on, well, what we'll call cool air, not diesel heated air. Because, fun fact, a lot of people probably won't know about or need to know about, is that cotton, rather, damp cotton has got a really low um, self-ignition temperature. So if you were to take a, a, a tumble dryer, close to this like this, and you only kind of half dried something that's pure cotton and, and it was now hot and damp, if you put that in a bag or something or leave it in a tight space, there is a high probability that that cotton will set itself on fire and burn things to the ground. You can Google it. It was a thing when they first invented uh, tumble dryers and like really, really big, uh, like a laundromat scale tumble dryers. All these uh, laundromats would go on fire sometimes and they couldn't work out why. And then it worked out it was the cotton and the tumble dryers. Uh, it would set them on fire and they need a cool cycle, which is why all modern tumble dryers have a cool cycle where they run with no heating and they run it to cool the cotton down again so that it does not go on fire when you take it out and put it in your washing basket. That is a side note. Right, I think the diesel heater has gone. It's putting out, it's getting there, it's getting cool-ish here. Right, let's see if uh, our tools are dry. Oh, they're lovely warm and absolutely bone dry. Ah, they're lovely and dry. Lovely dry towels. Oh yeah, it's a bit uh, hot in there. Yeah, we could definitely have run that uh, diesel heater a lot lower temperature. Now let's get our uh, thermally boy back again. We'll take a picture this time because it's faster. Switch the thermal mode. Yeah, it probably doesn't need to be that hot. Okay, I've come back into the workshop because it's drier in here. I'm slightly warmer, I suppose. I guarantee I have made this video a lot more complicated than it really needs to be. So I'll break it down into a few simple steps, which is one, buy a vented tumble dryer and not a condensing type, simply for ease of conversion. Step two, remove heating element from the rear section of said tumble dryer. And stage three is pipe your diesel heater, hot air output, into where the vented tumble dryer sucks its outside air in from, and that will get you hot air in your tumble dryer, dried through your clothes, and then your damp, hot, warm air can get vented back outside, and you'll have a diesel 
heater powered tumble dryer. So that's that bit. And if you've stayed to the end of the video, thank you very much for staying to the end of the video, but this is where it maybe gets a bit more interesting. So at the moment, that tumble dryer is powered by a mains powered voltage uh, motor that does the spinning of the drum. And I'd like to replace that with something that is 12 volts. I will eventually work out how to get the top off the tumble dryer so we can actually get in the motor. But one of the ones, one of the things we want to do is change that so the whole thing can basically run at 12 volts. Although the control side, now that won't really matter because all we'll be doing is having the 12 volt spin the drum and I think the, fa the fan that blows the air is on the same motor so we'll probably have that as well, it'll just be, I think it's just a, a fan on the end of the motor shaft so we'll see once we get that far. But the most important bit is a viewer, uh, I'll do the whole introduction thing in the actual video when we're doing about it, has made a controller for the heaters that has both a thermostat and a humidistat built in. So we should actually be able to have this control device stop the tumble dryer once the humidity level is at the level that we want, which signifies dried clothes. It'll be able to shut the heater down for us. I may have to ask you uh, for help for some more coding, because if we can use the I can't remember if it's an Arduino or an ESP or whatever it is. If we can use that module to then also control the motor for the tumble dryer, we can have the whole thing basically, you press start, it'll fire the diesel heater up, it'll start the tumble dryer spinning, and it'll run for either till it hits a too hot a temperature, you can set that as well, or you get the correct humidity output, and then it will stop the, the heater running and then if we can have it programmed to just keep the tumbledy dryer a bit spinning for another few minutes and then shut off, we'll have a fully working and fully on, you know, standalone diesel heater powered tumble dryer that just runs off 12 volts. That's the dream. And we'll be working more on that in part two. This was just part one, seeing how feasible it was to convert a tumble dryer. And it is, and it's even easier if you buy a vented one and not the condensing type. So, uh, hopefully I'll see you all back here again for part two. Any questions, comments, suggestions, leave them down below. I'll try my best to read them and answer them. Answer them. And as always, thanks for watching.